Hello, snowboarders of the internet. I'm your host, Averin Lefebvre, and in this video, we're going to be reviewing the Rome Stalefish. Got a little bit of an overhaul for 2023. This board features Rome's Free the Ride camera, which is rocker in the nose than a setback camera, so it's more dominant under the back foot. This is gonna give you the load pop, snap, and drive from your rear foot, but it's gonna help elevate that rocker in the nose to give you more optimal powder float, as well as ease of entry in and out of turns. This board is available in 148, 153, and 157. I rode this board at Rapo Basin on a day that was sunny bluebird, average temps, you had some hot pow, dust on crust, perfect corduroy, chop chunder, just kind of a mix of every spring-like condition after a small little snowfall. And I rode it with my Rome Black Label bindings and my K2 Thraxxus boots. So obviously this board has a fully directional flex. I mean, you look at it, you can just tell. So what you do get is a slightly softer nose that stiffens up outside the insert pack and progressively stiffens back up to the tail. Now the torsional flex is average at best, which makes this board highly predictable when you ride it. Overall, it comes in about a middle of the road volume shifted free ride powder board flex. So it's like not something that's super demanding, but it's also not underwhelming in any way, shape or form either. Now, when it comes to stability, the nose actually got stiffened up because they added the flax walls to this board. So that helps dissipate some of that kinetic energy. You don't feel that underfoot. And then when you get into the center section where the camber is, it's still stable. And a lot of that is actually due in part to the width of this board. This board is just super wide. So when you get into chop and chunder, it just pushes through everything. And when you're on a groomer and you're just mobbing, it's got this smoothness to it. It's not damp, it's still a lively board, but it's very smooth. Like you don't get a lot of that kinetic energy coming back up underfoot. With the camber being set back on this board, you're pretty much always loading it up if you're riding with your weight centered. If you're riding weight forward, it's kind of disengaged, but the second you center your weight on the board or you roll back onto the tail to drive a carve, you've engaged that camber section. And when it releases, because you've rolled back on the tail, it snaps. This is a board for launching pow pillows, hitting cat track gaps, boosting side hits. It engages, it's reactive, it snaps. So when it comes to buttering on this board, the nose is the obvious area you're gonna be doing it on. So you're gonna be popping a backside or frontside 180, pressing into that nose, and you're gonna feel where the camber comes down and meets the rocker. That's where the flex point is. It's gonna engage, and then that rod that's in the nose will provide any rebound out of it. It locks in and holds and snaps you right back out. With the tail, it's so minuscule, and this is pretty much where your camber is coming back down you end up just doing high speed wheelies or sitting on it sideways and then springing right back out of it. While this board is wide, it still has a smooth and fluid roll edge to edge. It's predictable, you know what you're gonna get. Now with it being back foot camber dominant, when you load it up and you're driving your knee into the center and just apexing that car, if you can get deep and low to a point, there are limitations on this board. You can't fully lay it over to the point you're dragging your stomach on the ground, I found, but you can get deep and low. You can lay a trench with it. It's got that power and drive out of the turn that you want. It's highly predictable with how it's gonna carve. I mean, you're rolling in, you're up on your heel edge, you go around the person, crank it onto your toe edge, lay it down deep, spring right back out, put it back over on the heel edge, put your arm on the ground. You can do that. It's those short, tight, quick carves or those medium mellow carves that this really stands out. But when you do need to lay it over, you can just be aware that, as I said, there are limitations. Who's this board for? The resort riding, powder chasing, party border. So since the last time I rode it, they added that flex wall. That actually makes it a little more stable. You notice that it just does a better job of absorbing that kinetic energy. And that's the differentiation between the stale fish and the service dog. It's got solid snap. You can just boost with this thing. You don't have to worry about it. It carves decently enough for what it actually is. It's a highly predictable ride. Comparable boards, the Telos Backslash, the Ride Super Pig, the Amplid Spray Tray. Binding recommendations, the Rome Katana, the Union Strata, the K2 Lean AT. This has been my review of the Rome Stalefish. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you own one? Are you gonna buy one? Leave me a comment down below. Let's have a conversation about this snowboard. 
If you're new here, remember to subscribe, click the bell, get those notifications. That way you're not missing any of the videos we got coming out for all you snowboarders of the internet. And if you really like what we're doing over here and you want to support us further, swing on over to Angry Snowboarder VIP and become a member. Sure, I could tell you more here, but I got a video over there that explains it so much better. As always, I've been your host, Avery Lefebvre, and I'll see you in another video.